Welcome to part two. We are now going to share some more expressions that you just need to know. They're so fun in French and they're very useful because French people have a lot of expressions. If you haven't seen part one, make sure you check that out right now so you can just get more and more fluent in your French. The first one we have here, I love this expression. Now you have to know this is really only used with young people. I once said this to someone, an older person, and she thought I was ridiculous, okay? J'ai grave du taf. It means mm. I have so much work to do. If you want to say it the polite way, j'ai beaucoup de travail, right? right? But j'ai grave du taf, it's like serious work. This next one is violent, and it's no <laughs> offense to this particular group of person. This is just an expression they have yeah. in French. Un étouffe chrétien. <laughs> so basically it's like if you're having like a very heavy pastry, that's huh? the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay. A very heavy pastry with maybe a lot of cream. It's very creamy, it's very rich. It's like un étouffe chrétien. You're gonna strangle. You're gonna strangle yourself. But who are you strangling? A Christian. A Christian. Why? I have no clue. Yeah. C'est un étouffe chrétien. C'est le truc que je mange. Ouais. Okay. So like this pastry, c'est un étouffe chrétien. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This That's one, a... you taught this to yeah, me, I and did. I think it's super cute because it's actually using something in English that we don't say. Mm -hmm. But in French, if you say "je suis pompée up," it means you're tipsy. You have been. It's in the face. Like you're. You've been drinking, and you're starting to feel like. <laughs> Like funny, yeah. with energy, so you pump it up. Pump it up. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so cute. Next one is very funny, it's very visual, but it's very strange. It's poser un lapin, which basically means to just to leave a rabbit <laughs> instead of yourself. Instead of yourself, so basically it's to ditch someone or to stand someone up. Uh, to stand someone up. Yeah. So let's say I had to meet a friend tonight, but for some reason I can't go and I don't say anything, so my friend is gonna wait and wait for me and I will never show up. J'ai posé un lapin. It's almost like you're putting a rabbit there to pretend that you're there yeah. and then you're not actually there. And this one we use a lot. Do you? Yeah. Do you stand lapin. people up a lot? I guess we do. I really love this one too. They're also using um, another, an English word to kind of mean something else. So in English we would say, let's play it by ear. You know, if you're, you make, you're making plans with someone and you're not really sure what time or where you're gonna meet, let's play it by ear. In French you'd say, on fait au feeling. Mm -hmm. Next one is, je me sauve. So basically, I have to escape. Yeah. Or I, like you really have to go so let's say you have to go somewhere and you're stuck in a meeting and like you're trying to go but you can't and then suddenly you just get up and like je me sauve like I really have to go now yeah I really like using it like when you know when you're with friends and you're kind of like you're saying goodbye or you're taking mm -hmm. a long time to get out of the house and then you realize oh gosh we really gotta go on se sauve mm -hmm. so then you can change it to the we form on yeah. se sauve and it's like hey we're off let's go let's go um this next one i added on here it's not really an expression it's more like a term for bachelor or bachelorette party but i think it, it's quite depressing yeah. so what you would say for bachelor or bachelorette party is un entremont de vie de garçon ou un entremont de vie d'une jeune fille and this means a burial of the life of a boy or the burial of a life of a girl. Getting married is not getting buried, okay? This is not the death of you. <laughs> Next, very useful, we use it all the time, avoir la flemme. It's like, if you're lazy, there's something you really have to do, but you really have no, you really don't want to do it, oh, j'ai la flemme. Let's say it's Saturday and you just want to stay at home and yeah. relax, but you have to go somewhere and you're like, oh, j'ai la flemme. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go, j'ai la flemme. It, it, it's kind of like, Je suis pas motivée. Je suis pas motivée. Like, I'm right. just really not in the mood. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to go. I'm feeling lazy. Exactly. But I find it funny because phlegm for us is like, like this stuff, and like oh. mucus in here. Okay. So it's like, it, I have the image of being just kind of like a big uh, glob of mucus. Yeah. <laughs> Next expression, t'as du bol, which literally means you have a ball, but that actually means you're lucky. Uh, but you you can also say it in the negative forms like t'as pas de bol, mm -hmm. like you have ah, you're not, you're not you're, you're you're yeah such bad luck. Yeah. Let's say for instance uh, you're going on vacation somewhere sunny. You're going to Mexico for the summer and you get sick. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, t'as pas de bol. T'as pas de bol. Or it's raining. Or it's raining. Ah. T'as pas de chance. Okay. Pas de bol. It's kind of like. Too bad. Too bad. The regular form to say you're lucky is tu as de la chance, but tu as du bol is just more familiar. Mm -hmm. um, a nice one 
is to say I slept in. You would say j'ai fait la grasse mat ou je fais la grasse matinée. Mm -hmm. And it means like I made the fat morning. To normally say like be careful or watch out when you're in Paris and there's a moto riding by really fast, you say attention. Mm -hmm. But another more familiar way you can say is fais gaffe. Which I think is really mm -hmm. funny. Next one is être dans la lune. So it's like to be on the moon. That actually means to be spacey. Yeah, right? so my friend Amelie taught me this one. I was talking to her and she wasn't listening. <laughs> and she said, uh, yeah. pardon, j'étais dans la lune. J'étais dans la lune. I'm sorry, I was spacing out as being really, or like, oh, aujourd'hui je suis dans la lune. I'm super spacey mm -hmm. today. I'm kind of like out of it. Next one, my friend Aline taught me. Faire au pif. So pif is another word for nose. And to faire mm -hmm. au pif is kind of like to follow your instincts. Yeah. And to not necessarily measure something when you're cooking. Let's say also you're maybe looking for a restaurant, you don't have a precise address, and like you're walking in the street and you go, ah, oh, maybe this one, and you chose au pif, okay, like randomly. I just learned this one the other night, tu es large or tu es large. It literally means you're large, um, but the way they use it, it means you have plenty of time, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. So if you're saying like, oh, I have a train in 30 minutes, and he, you, your friend can say, ah, tu es large, mm -hmm. you're fine, you have plenty of time. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. The last one is one of the first expressions I learned. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Je ne veux pas me jeter des fleurs, mais... Mm -hmm. So basically, you're about to say something nice about yourself, but you want you don't want to sound arrogant. So you're like preparing your audience. Uh, it's like I don't want to brag, yeah. but and like basically, se jeter des fleurs. It's like to throw throw flowers at yourself. Right. It's like when you're on stage and someone's they're throwing mm -hmm. flowers because you did an excellent job. But if you're yeah. throwing yourself flowers, you're just you're bragging. So it's like saying, I want to brag, but I make the best chocolate cake. Je ne veux pas me jeter des fleurs, mais je fais le meilleur gâteau. Exactly. Right, yeah. For the last few expressions, Orly has prepared some that she thinks I have never heard of, so she's going to try to stump me and see if maybe she can teach me something new. The first one is, casser du sucre sur le dos de quelqu'un. So to break the sugar on the back of someone, I have no idea what this means. You've never heard it? No, never. Okay, so basically it means to talk badly about someone behind their back. Uh -huh. So for instance, you are at this party and you can see that there are two people talking and like you hear they are talking about someone and they are not so nice about this person. Ils sont en train de casser du sucre sur son dos. Next one, maybe you know this one. I hope so. Let's see. <laughs> Ça me gonfle. Makes me bloated. Uh huh. Really? But okay, but figuratively, not literally. Yeah. It's like to say that something or someone is really annoying you, like it's oh. really boring or it's really annoying or. So it's another way to complain. It's another way to complain. <laughs> you have so many expressions to complain, right? For okay. instance, like you're. You're talking to a friend and he's complaining about so many different things and he's never happy about anything and you're like, oh, il me gonfle. Okay. Like, it's so annoying. Yeah. Next one is, revenir à ses moutons. Come back to your sheep. Exactly. Get back to the point. Yeah. I think I've yeah. heard this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, so if someone is is talking and going on and going on a tangent and how would do you say like let's get back to our sheep? Oui, revenons à nos moutons. Et revenons à nos moutons. À nos moutons. Uh -huh. And actually you can actually mix it this one with another word that you love, I know. You can say bref. <laughs> revenons à nos moutons. Because bref is a very very useful word, right? I say it all say the all time. time. Because I'm like, especially when you're learning another language and you're kind of like taking a long time to say something and you're like, plus, and then you want to get back to the exactly. point. Exactly. Plus. So if I'm the one going on and on, can I still say yeah. revenons? Yeah, you can say okay. it also. Plus, revenons à nos Yeah. And people actually say this. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say it next time. As I said in part one, I want to make sure everyone knows who this person is. <laughs> she is my French teacher. She is the person I've been meeting with to improve my French. When I have questions, she's so good at explaining stuff and she's very flexible and she thankfully has a website called Paris O'Clock for anyone who wants to learn French at any level. Yeah, any level and it doesn't matter where you are in the world because I give classes uh, by Skype so it's very flexible. She has this thing called the internet um, and if you have the internet too then you can make it happen. <laughs> so you can contact me, I'll be happy to help. It is so fun to learn a language and it's hard to do it on your own. Sometimes you need someone holding your hand like this pretty woman over here. <laughs>